Hi everyone, John here. Welcome back to another Sapphire tutorial. Last week, I was lucky enough to go and see Kraftwerk in concert, the legendary German electronic band. And one of the band's albums, The Man Machine, was an album that I had when I was in high school, so it's going back a few years now. And it had a really striking red, white and black look to it, the album cover. And at the concert, the band had all these amazing graphics behind them, so it really inspired me to sort of jump into After Effects, get into Sapphire, and play around with some looks. So I come up with this look. So if you have Sapphire 2024 installed, go ahead and download the After Effects project file and follow along with me as I break this down. Now, before we jump into Builder and break this down, I just wanna talk about the text animation. Obviously this is in After Effects, but you know, if you've got a host that supports Sapphire Effect Builder, you can always use a text layer from your host. The key thing to remember is that the text really needs to be animated in order for this to actually, actually work, because if the text is just sitting there in the frame, then you're not gonna get the time effects really to do anything because they've got nothing to work with. So for this one, what I've done is just done a simple text animation and I've got an animator in here and I've got a range selector animated from zero through to 100. And if I just press U twice, you can see the position is negative 2940. So the text is way back behind the camera, although I don't have a camera in this scene. And the range selector is causing it to fly in letter by letter. So as the letter is no longer part of that range, as it moves through the text, the text flies in and goes, reverts back to its original position. So this is just pretty standard uh, text animation in After Effects. There's plenty of tutorials out there on how to create something like this. I've also got just a couple of keyframes for position in here. Uh, there we go, position. So I'm animating the position for the text animator, but I've also got the main transform position animated as well, just to give the text a little bit of movement. Otherwise the text is just animated in, then it's kind of just sitting there. So that's the basic text animation. So what we'll do is we will switch on S effect and you can see what a difference that makes. So let's go and break this down. Clicking on edit effect and that's gonna launch Sapphire Effect Builder. All right, so I'm just going to zoom in a little bit here, about 50%, and don't get too scared, <laughs> because there's lots of nodes, but um, it's really, really straightforward. Once you get used to working in Sapphire Effect Builder, this kind of stuff is really easy. It definitely makes creating complex looks easier. So let's start at the top. We've got the source. You can see I've got preview selected nodes selected. So there's my text flying in. So we've got a range of different time effects. As I mentioned, time effects are new inside of Sapphire Effect Builder. Prior to Sapphire 2024, we only had the flicker effect, but now we've got all of the time effects in here. And they've also been reworked to preview much better than they did before. So let's have a look at these. The first one is Time Warp RGB. So each of these time effects are gonna have a different effect on the text. So I'm just gonna drag the current time indicator and you can see the text is flying in as per the animation, but you can see how it's kind of ghosted there. So this is using Time Warp RGB, but you may be wondering why it's still grayscale. That's because I've got Clamp Chroma set to zero. The default setting for this is one. So you can see this time warp RGB splits up the channels like this or separates the channels, but I want it in black and white. So I just brought that down to zero. So that's the first text animation. Next is using random edits. This works really well with this animation. Check this out. So it really gives that sort of jumpy, sort of flickery look to the text, which I really like. Very simple effect, just edit frame length and seed. So I've left this at the um, default settings, but probably played around with the seed just until I got something that I thought looked good. Really nice, no keyframing, just instant animation. 
The next is reverse edits. So this is going to reverse it. You can see how it starts in, then it flies out, and then it actually, the Z position is in the opposite direction. So that's really interesting as well. Another time warp RGB, slightly different settings, still with a clamp chroma of zero. Just a little bit different there. And random edits too. So a second random edits, giving it another slightly different look. You can see edit frame length is the same, but seed is different, giving it a real jerky effect. So that's all of the time effects. You can see they're all plugged into the source. And just a, uh, a word of warning, time effects do have to be plugged directly into the source. So if you get an error message, that's why. Now, what we'll do is we'll start from the left again and work our way down. So under time warp RGB1, I have the mosaic effect. You can see how this gives it that blocky look. And this is definitely inspired by the Craftwork t-shirt that I saw. They have a red t-shirt with each of the four band members in like really low res 8-bit and really blocky look and uh, definitely inspired me to use Mosaic for this. So Time Warp RGB plus Mosaic and you can see that's piped into the foreground of Wipe Stripes but we'll come to that later. Now Random Edits is piped into the foreground of the wipe for wedges transition. So remember there's random edits and there's our reverse edit. So by combining those with wipe for wedges, the wipe for wedges transition, we get this. So when I was starting to create this look, this is the sort of first, I guess, look that I created that I thought, hmm, this is starting to look interesting just by combining two of the time effects together. You can see that wipe four wedges is really interesting because it gives us this cross look, which I really like. And as you can see, if the text wasn't moving, then it, you wouldn't really see anything happening. So that's random edits and reverse edits into wipe four wedges. Now we have the time warp RGB2. And that's piped into the background of wipe rings. So another transition. So then we've got these three in the foreground and this one in the background. So if we click on wipe rings, check this out. Give myself a bit of space here. So now we've added a second transition. And that reverse edits is interesting because you can see the rings much more easily when the text is flying in the opposite direction. So we get this kind of look. So when I added this, I thought, mm, now we're really starting to get somewhere. And that jumpiness caused by the random edits is um, keeping the text interesting. Okay, so we've seen this and we've seen this. So we've got this one into the foreground of wipe stripes and all of this into the background of wipe stripes. So the wipe stripes is another transition. And let's take a look at what that looks like. So really getting full value out of the transition effects in Sapphire Builder. So that's really breaking that up. And Wipe stripes. Obviously, with all of these, you could go in and adjust the settings, and that's what I've done. There's something like frequency. See, if I increase the frequency, we can get more stripes there. You know, changing the angle actually makes it look interesting as well. This is what I love about the transition effects. They, I'm not treating them as a transition. I'm treating them, um, you know, as an effect, and it allows me to combine as you can see, different effects together. So we can see part of one effect and part of the other effect at the same time. So I guess it's kind of like a transition that doesn't transition. So that's looking really good as well. I mean, as usual, I could have played for hours and, you know, just tinkered with it and, um, and still not had enough. 
So that's actually really nice as well. I mean, I kind of even prefer that look. I'll just undo for now so we can go back to the original. All right, so that's this whole section here. So what have we got next? So we've got, well, actually not this one here. That's this section here. So this is now going into another wipe rings in the foreground. And this random edits, the one we saw before, is going into the background. So we get this look. Just adding another random edits on top. I think what the deal was here was that readability was starting to become an issue. So I wanted to add another layer of text in there just to make sure it was readable. But you can see how fractured and interesting that's looking. Very nice. Okay, so that's basically all of the text. Those, all of these ones and this one. I can select them all. I don't want to select that one. But you get the idea. Now, let's take a look. We'll just jump across to this side here now. And then we'll look at how these are joined together. So this side is where the background's being created. So I've got sapphire color giving us that red. And sapphire color is being piped into two effects. One is sapphire gamma. So just adjusting the offset darks, just to darken it down a little bit. Okay. And scan lines. So we're using sapphire scan lines on the other side. And then we're using another transition. This is the most transitions I've ever used at once. Sapphire white tiles. So you can see how we're transitioning between them, but it's actually animated. And that's because over here I've used the auto animation setting. And this is one I haven't used before. This is the animate from one, uh, animate from one to value back to one. So it's kind of giving a bouncing effect. So it starts completely off and then it goes on and then it bounces back again, which I thought was really interesting. So a little bit of auto animation in there. So that's that part of the background and that's being piped into the background of Sapphire layer. But on this side, we've got Sapphire parallax strips. And I often like to use parallax strips in strips over black mode because it allows me to use it as, a, as an element or as a mat. I've added Sapphire warp polar to give you that circular look and added them together using Sapphire Layer, using the Multiply Blend Mode. So we get that look. So quite an interesting background, and that could easily be saved as a preset just by itself. All right, so there's the background, and we've already seen the text. So we've got a couple of other things going on down here. There's our text. Now I wanted to have the text a little more integrated with the background, so for that, I've used Sapphire Distort Chroma. So underneath the white rings, I've added Distort Chroma. And you can see how that's given that distortion look. And the reason it's giving it that shape is because I've used Warp Polar as the lens, just by piping it into the lens port. So anything that we do to Warp Polar will change how the distortion works on this text. So once we have that, we combine both of those in Sapphire Layer. So this one here, the background, and this one into Sapphire Layer, into the foreground, and we get that look. And what I like about this Distort Chroma is it has the chroma effects. It gives it kind of really nice glassy look, which works really nicely. And that's the whole look. So. While it looks complicated, when you break it down, it's actually fairly straightforward. And this is the way I always work in Sapphire Builder. I'll add an effect, I'll tweak it, and then I'll often use a transition to um, hide part of that effect so that I can show uh, a different effect. And then I'll have a bit of a play with that. And if it's not enough, I'll add a bit more and keep adding effects and keep adding transitions until, until I've overcooked it. And then I'll start stripping it back. This definitely wasn't the, the first look I created. It took me a day or so to, to sort of zero in on something where I was happy. But um, just starting simple and then just slowly, slowly building up using transitions, using Sapphire Layer 
until you've got the look that you um, that you want. So maybe take some time now and try some different variations. You may want to switch out some of the transitions. I find the white transitions work the best. Also try different time effects. Some of them won't work with this setup, but there's a whole range of them in there and it's definitely worth exploring them now that they're inside Effect Builder. And just try other Sapphire effects. Just sandwich them in between the different nodes and see what kind of looks you can create. Back here in After Effects or in the host that you're using, Try different fonts. I've actually set up a different one here. It's exactly the same look, but it's a slightly different font. See, it's more of a sort of tech looking font and it's slightly finer. And I've also just changed the animation where it just flies in like that. So it really fills up the frame a little bit more, which works really well with those wipe transitions. So you get this kind of look as it sort of flies in. So just changing the font and changing the way the font animates can change up the look as well. All right, so that's just a very quick look at one of the looks that I've been working on. I hope you found that useful. If you have any questions, just leave a comment. Also visit Boris Effects to learn more about Sapphire or to download a demo. But for now, this is John. I'll see you in the next tutorial.